Admiral's Log. As the relentless tides of time surge onward, the pages of history are etched with both triumph and tribulation. In the theater of operations, the echoes of our recent past carry a somber note. The naval landing in Spain, an endeavor laden with hope, has met with the bitter sting of failure. The weight of disappointment bears heavily upon us all, as we mourn the loss of our brave marines who went ashore with unwavering resolve. The toll of such a setback resonates deeply within my heart. The lives lost, the sacrifices made, and the dreams unfulfilled stand as a testament to the unyielding spirit of those who serve under my command. It is a stark reminder that the path of duty often intersects with the harsh realities of conflict. In the face of adversity, the call to duty remains unwavering. The government, resolute in its determination, has ordered another invasion, an endeavor that demands both renewed commitment and the courage to face the shadows of the past. As I prepare to relay this order to my valiant men, I do so with a heavy heart knowing that their indomitable spirit will once again rise to the challenge. We embark on this path, not in the absence of sorrow, but with the steadfast belief that from the ashes of defeat, the flames of determination shall guide us towards a brighter tomorrow. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 24. The war for Spain, and with Spain, rages on, and as such, the coastal raids do too. USS Saratoga and USS St. Louis are going to be taking on the Santa Ana and San Juana Menor, these two cruisers standing in the way of the destruction of more transport ships. Seeing as the invasion of Western Spain has failed up until this point, we're going to have to try again, and making sure that Spain does not receive any further resupplies, resources or other shipments that can further their war effort is critical to our operations. Now, Saratoga and St. Louis, both Scranton-class uh, vessels, they're armed with the 9-inch guns, 9-inch Mark V, really, really good weapons. Reload in only 10.8 seconds, because these veteran crews know how to use them. The weather isn't exactly ideal. Um, I don't think exactly the weather living up to the <laughs> description here. Uh, yes, it might be daytime. It is really overcast. I wouldn't say there's a light breeze, and it seems that there's a bit more than slight waves. But we'll just have to take the weather as it comes, because that's uh, as much as my power as an admiral goes. Not something I can influence. Now, these cruisers that the Spanish have, they're about the same price tag as my own. They're armed with 12 6.6 .6, uh, 6 .6 inch guns, as well as a bunch of secondaries and torpedo launchers. A bunch of visible, what is that, quintuples, quadruples, uh, quads. Four torpedo launchers, nicely organized. I don't really feel like I want to get intimately acquainted with those things. So let's just have Saratoga and St. Louis scram or shell these things from afar. Making sure they're never going to get to use them. Please target the lead ship. Your HE is probably not going to be good enough to pen them. So especially... Oh, well, partial pen against the main belt. <laughs> Alright, I like it. That's what we're going to run with, if that's what you guys want to do. Destroyed a secondary gun. Well, you got plenty of those. Fire set, damage to main towers. Did you guys forget to put on armor or something? They're taking a, an absolute kicking. Switch to armor piercing. I wouldn't be surprised if we can deal a substantial blow to these guys with armor piercing. The sheer amount of damage that we're doing to these things is pretty serious. Yeah, destroyed a torpedo launcher. No, damage to a torpedo launcher. More flooding. I'm trying to punch a whole bunch of holes in this ship, making sure it's forced to retreat. And as such, can probably not launch the torpedoes. Destroyed secondary tower. We're gonna go for a full mission kill on this one. I don't want to have this thing suddenly come back from being half dead and coming after me once again. Absolutely not interested in that. Flooding. Okay, 
Our turret to starboard. Assume the other one has launched torpedoes by now. Low fuel? Really? Where did you come from that you got low fuel? How are my ships doing fuel-wise? 99 and 95. That's more like it. Now, it's entirely possible that this convoy has been out here for a really long time. And that, potentially, they were on their way back. Trying to get their supplies delivered to Spain. I don't know if this convoy is inbound or outbound. It doesn't really matter. But if it's inbound, it would potentially explain why these guys are running on low fuel. They did launch torpedoes against Saratoga. That's the second ship. Sorry, the lead ship. I don't exactly know when. That's my concern. So, let's try to be unpredictable. Making sure not continuing on our planned course. I really don't have that much armor, but their armor quality is very good. It's 5.5 inch plus 163%. There's nothing the Saratoga can't exactly pen. Even at this angle, which is a pretty high ricochet chance, it still can pen the stern. And the Spanish are starting to desperately feel that. They did send out another torpedo. Come on, can we take it down, please? I think we might not be able to do as much damage as I'd like. There we go. That's more like it. 11,000 damage. I'm not used to this counter being up here this long. And you're done. Alright. Transports, have I got news for you? None of it good. Poor transports. They are armed. Two inch guns. Gladly not seeing any torpedoes in these, because that is not a fun surprise to find when you're trying to take down a convoy. Good lord, that thing's taken a lot of damage. 235,000? What the hell? Okay, last time around we had the 20.9 inch gun strike a ship for 92,000 and said that's the highest damage I've ever seen. Um, I'm now seeing 125,849.5. I think we got a new record. This ship has taken 281,000 points of damage. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely bananas. Oh well. Let's just mop up the transport, shall we? I don't mind giving these guys a chance to surrender. They just make sure that they leave the ship, and I'll handle everything else. There's two more of them down. Only this last one. We can proceed. Yikes. Another 71,000 damage hit. Keep in mind, I am running the rebalancer mod. So you're probably going to see some slightly different numbers, considering the normal game, or relative to the normal game. As it turns out, the Spanish have another convoy. And this one also has to get taken down. Now we're operating just west of the Sahara. And this means we're not going out there alone. Because we have some allies. These are Portuguese ships. This is the light cruiser of, I think, a French design. With a couple of 5.3s. She is very fast at 37 knots. And would be ideally suited to hunting down the 7 transports. The destroyer at 32 knots, my destroyer at 30.9 knots. Uh, they're not going to be as useful to hunt them down, but they might be able to add some of their gunfire to dealing with the enemy heavy cruisers. The main ship that I have is the Nebraska in 1942 uh, version of the Sentinel, so she's slightly older. She also has a South Dakota, another Scranton class, and the Spanish are once again using the same... Admiral Oquendo class heavy cruiser that we've seen before. The Nebraska. Armed with 12 inch guns. Not the biggest, but very well suited to dealing with a bunch of cruisers. Now the Sentinels have been around since the start of the campaign. They are very reliable ships. Against battleships they're not necessarily ideal. 
because their guns are just not punchy enough. Although, with this level of HE, you really don't want to underestimate them, as they can still, with a few hits, just clearly clean the tower off of most ships. Let's have the... Um, I barely dare pronounce that. The De Horter um, try and pass the cruisers and hunt down the transports all by themselves. As the DDs... I don't know. I guess just follow... Follow the BC. South Dakota. Also follow the BC. We're going to use our range advantage. And we're going to slow down a touch. Making sure that these guns are going to be very, very accurate. You are firing armor-piercing shells with capped ballistic HE and standard AP. The Spanish armor is good. But I don't think it's going to be sufficient to stand up to this level of HE punishment. Now, what are we looking at? How are they sailing? Cruisers coming to me. It looks like a 4 and 1. And then we've got the transports in the back moving around. Trying desperately to steer themselves away from this fight. So I'm going to try and clear out the cruisers with the Nebraska. Ooh, that was a good hit on the cruiser. Yeah, let's say this is another uh, cruiser group coming home with their convoy. Because they're mostly running low fuel. Which is going to be really bad for the life expectancy. Low fuel ships don't do very well when it comes to reaching their, let's say, usual top speed. Smoke up the cruiser. Make sure that this thing doesn't die. Because it might be a loner from the Portuguese, but it's still going to affect my war score against the Spanish if something happens to it. Now at 36 knots, she's definitely really quick. And that should help this ship survive. So maneuvering plus smoke plus being quick. I think he'll be fine. Now the battlecruiser is really taking the Spanish to bat. I'm going to start turning her around. I don't like my odds of getting torpedoed here. Nebraska. Oh crap, you're out of itchy shells now. Hmm... Okay, well, AP it is then. I just have to make the AP shells work. Uh, we're going to do a nice full turn. Give the Nebraska some time to work over another cruiser. Give the South Dakota time to work over another cruiser. And I don't think the DDs are just in range yet. They soon will be. The Portuguese cruiser... Doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Splitting off from the main fleet. And going right for the transports. The range on these is 13.6 with HE. So let's have them take the first couple of shots against the transport. Now it's going to be a bit of a mess for the formation. And that's actually not necessarily a problem. Because the DDs will spot any threats first. I.e. torpedoes. And it doesn't seem like these guys have launched anything just yet. What's your torpedo range? 15.9. So we are within torpedo range. You've just decided... What? We actually hit one? Yeah, we hit one with a torpedo. <laughs> that was that salvo from Nebraska. Wow. That's uh, unexpected, but not unwelcome. I like it. Alright, DDs, you're going to do your screening duties right now. We're going to see if these 5.3s can get, like, a bit of pesky damage in. I'm finding that Nebraska's taking actually a bit more damage than I would like. Those 6-inch guns are starting to add up. All those shots. Uh, you, switch to the next transport. Because it looks like at least one of these heavy cruisers is not particularly entertained by the fact that you're going, well, at their protectees without getting shot at. There we go. These have 5.3 inch guns. They're actually packing pretty respectable armor piercing shells. What is that? Capped shells, yeah. Okay, there goes another transport. Are you going to pick another transport as your target? Yeah, you were. Okay. You did take some hit. 
And it looked like it went almost cleanly through you. Oh boy, that's a lot of incoming fire. I got a smoke screen in two minutes, so we're going to have to make zigzag maneuvers up until such a point to make sure this thing survives. There goes the next transport. Nebraska. I'm seeing a torpedo launch against one of the DDs. DDs come round. So let's say they launched at the DD where it's going to be, which is about there. By that time, I'm expecting the Nebraska to be nowhere near that. So she shouldn't be at risk, but the Dakota might be. So let's send the South Dakota this way. Allowing her, hopefully, some better chances of survival. Why are you trying to take down a cruiser? You might be able to do a lot of things, but taking down a cruiser, I don't think you are. Smoke yourself up. To get out of the range of those guns. Yeah. Either we're out of range, or they decided to switch targets. That's a torpedo launcher destroyed. PD, smoke yourself up. Uh, we're going to set some torpedo solutions here. Incoming torpedo. Direction. Pretty close. Pretty close to the DDs. I don't like that. The quarry could be at risk. Hmm. Okay, let's set some torpedo solutions. So, these guys are going to be zipping all over the place. Uh, you're going to target San Francisco. You're going to target Magdalena. You're going to target Manuela. I want to really keep a close eye on that torpedo. Doing a lot of damage, but that torpedo can almost single-handedly destroy one of my ships. That's a 23-inch torp. I believe we've been acquainted with those. <clears throat> and it didn't really do any... Uh, well, let's say it wasn't very pleasant for my ships. Ooh. Six-inch fire is raking the Anamite and taking a lot of her buoyancy off. Point where I don't believe she'll survive. Got a torp there and there. That I know of. Shit. Well, at least she got her torps off. Maybe she's going to be able to get some revenge. These torpedoes, how good are they? They're 21 inch torpedoes running plus 27% visibility. So they'll definitely know they're there. Got outbound torps there and there. The ships are so slow, I don't think they're going to be ending up anywhere near the torpedoes. Nebraska is still slugging away. Very good. Are you done with the transports yet? Almost. Very good. Very good. Another DD taking a bunch of damage there. Wait, 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 wait. Somebody is either launching or has launched against the battle cruiser. Because yeah, this one was launching potentially against the DD. That one is not a problem. I'm gonna start focusing these things down. Focus on this one. Torpedo coming up from behind you, turn to port. You're going to focus the San Cristobal together. And then we're going to take out the Manuela. Serious damage on San Cristobal. The ship's listing so badly that the starboard secondaries are starting to, well, get underwater. Some of her turrets have been destroyed. Low fuel all over the place. What are you shooting? Armor piercing. Perfect. Flooding. You. Take down the last transport.
Any torpedoes that I need to be aware of? Well, not really. These are mostly going after the DDs, I think. This one was sent sort of in the direction of the Dakota, but she's already out of that area. There goes the Cristobal. This is next. Nebraska. Push in. Full head. Let's have those five inches work. I think the five inches have already been doing a lot of work. Uh, pretty. Pretty okay. The 12 inches definitely doing more work. There goes Manuela. I think we're creating a very interesting diving spot here. With four, potentially five Spanish cruisers sunk almost side by side. There's 300 meter range distance between these. There we go. Okay, so that's another Spanish convoy sunk. And another set of Spanish materials not making it to Spain. 8,000 victory points, but the Spanish get 374 for the loss of that Portuguese destroyer. Unfortunate. But if you don't run maximum bulkheads, this is a very real risk of not being able to come back alive. As we launch yet another invasion in western Spain, the Spanish are throwing whatever is left of their navy at ours. So we got four more heavy cruisers coming in. It's the same design, they seem to only have this type. The opponent is going to be my galaxy, the Indiana, which is the old North Carolina class, and a couple of heavy cruisers. Now there is one Voyager over here, there's a Chattanooga, the rest of them are, sorry there's one Defiant, the rest of them are Voyagers, so six 10 inch guns. That's the exact weapon type that I need in order to get a both decent amount of damage and good volume of fire against these cruisers. Indiana with her 13 inch guns is going to be very useful, pretty much like the battle cruiser. And the Galaxy with her 16 inch guns, probably firing high explosive, is going to make these things take a lot of fire damage. And, well, potentially, depending on how and where these shells strike, they might even be able to completely pen the armor of one of these ships. The 16 inch shells with those really high end um, armor piercing values at a range of 25 kilometers are able to pen 12 inches of belt armor or 7.9 inches of deck armor. So one way or the other way, uh, they're going to get taken down. Let's make this a nice screenshot, shall we? It looks a little odd with <laughs> one set of guns pointing up and the other not. The other was loading. Here we go. Send it. No? There it is. That's going to be a fantastic screenshot. You'll see absolutely nothing because of the <laughs> smoke and the muzzle exhaust. The muzzle blast. Alright, you guys are going to go on the offensive. Why are we so slow? Slight waves. Yeah, right. 13 inch guns from the older Indiana are already servicing the Spanish ships, shall we say. Accuracy not great. HE not as nearly as good as the Galaxy. Um, but it doesn't matter because the AP is doing what I need it to do. The AP shells on these ships are semi-ballistic, making them very well suited to dealing with this particular threat. If, for example, the Spanish had had a super battleship, much like the one we've encountered a while ago from the French, this would not have been a great ship to have in this particular task force. The AP would probably have been able to rake the tower with some damage. The HE might have been able to set some fires, but we'd need far bigger guns. Now, the ship I'm referring to was one of the French super battleships. 100,000 tons of displacement, and I believe it had eight... 18 inch guns so that was a very very dangerous and um, well one-time adversary for the Titan the Titan was lost during that particular battle which also happened to be her maiden voyage so yeah that was unfortunate see this is what those shells can do main deck pen six and a half K damage that is what I need those shells to do I'm kind of waiting for the galaxy to pull something similar with one of those HE shells so far, 
Well, she's hit a few shells, but nothing as destructive as I would like. I'm keeping the, uh, the Chattanooga, the Defiant, back. She does not have the armor to survive any of these six inch shells. She doesn't have the firepower to hit them yet. So I'm not exactly expecting her to be a useful asset this battle. I'm going to have to be a bit careful with Northampton and the other Voyagers. They are very maneuverable ships with a turning circle of 276 meters. They also are able to detect incoming torpedoes with their sonar too. And yet, I wouldn't be surprised if the weather conditions are somehow impacting my ability to detect torpedoes. It does not make sense, but um, I think it's more of a UI thing where it is just more difficult to visually spot these things as the UIs, well, how should I put this? Even the fog, the fog works against even the exclamation point saying, hey, there's a torpedo launcher here or a torpedo in the water. So I think the best course of action is to, if you can even see these things, uh, change their course frequently and make sure that they're providing a very difficult target. They did launch against the battleship a while ago. I don't know how long ago. Why is fog not actually a spec? Maybe they're calling that... A Whoa! <laughs> Maybe they're calling that overcast. Jesus. I'm glad I had the galaxy and the Indiana change course just at that point. Because that would have been a severely damaging impact. The galaxy has a torpedo blister and good anti-flooding systems. But a 23-inch torpedo... You can never underestimate those things. They'll cause such immense amounts of damage that it's beyond something that you really think you can just tank. And damage done, 72k. Damage taken, 3k. So we're definitely coming out ahead here. And it looks like this is another couple of Spanish ships that are not be coming home. Last time I checked, the Spanish had six or seven heavy cruisers left as the totality of their fleet. So I think we'll have completely destroyed the Spanish Armada at this point. There is no more ships. Except for those that are in dry dock, I guess. Caridad Inglesa taking a load of damage. It's a regular train crew, so they've been around. Sixty-two million mini bulkhead spacious quarters. Yeah, but you're not up to sinking a battleship, nor the Voyager type. Boom. That was a good damaging hit from once again the Indiana. I think the Indiana might have done more damage here. Galaxy did nineteen k. Indiana did fifty-three k. Those semi armor piercing shells, semi ballistics, really good shell. Exactly what I need in this fight. Chattanooga. <laughs> she probably went, I helped, I helped. Hitting exactly one shell for a total of 18 damage. The Voyagers did very well um, 14k, 7.5k, 9.1k. And I'm really happy I was able to get the galaxy steered away from that inbound torpedo. That would have been pretty, pretty bad. It wouldn't have sunk the ship, per se, unless maybe something like a flash fire would have happened. Um, but considering that I got a decent torpedo blister and a low flash fire chance, it's not that likely. So where does this leave the Spanish, then? Yes, yes, yes. There we go. We're invading Western Spain once again. Uh, I've lost 34,000 soldiers in Western Spain, and the Spanish have lost 26,000. Defender's advantage. The Spanish have three ships left. Three heavy cruisers. Now, the Spanish area is so small that I wouldn't be surprised that we're going to be seeing one of these ships again. Um, yeah, there's one here. And there's potentially more of them. The French are on the move here in the Western Sahara, as well as from southern France to, uh, what is that, southern Spain. And this is a really sizable army that's roaming down there. The defenders, the Spanish, are getting assistance from the Chinese and the Germans. 
How exactly the Germans were able to get their forces all the way down there is beyond me. But they did it. And the Spanish are probably helpful or very, very welcoming for their assistance. The Spanish have made sure that the French have made absolutely no advances here. There's nothing going on there. Their army here is 500,000 men. Their army here is 800,000 men. I don't really have a good chance to succeed, even though I'm well exceeding the required amount of tonnage. So we'll just have to see how the next couple of battles are going to go here, how the next couple of turns are going to go, because it's something I cannot directly affect. In the next episode, we're also going to turn our attention to Asia. Over here, I have a couple of DDs, and I am looking to reinforce them with another ship. Because I am at war, believe it or not, with the Chinese. Now, the Chinese haven't really shown much activity. They have 11 cruisers, and apparently they're perfectly happy with that navy. They're not building anything else. They're at war with pretty much everybody. Um, and if one of those... Well, if those cruisers come out to play, I'm going to have a pretty hard time. Let's send another DD here. And I believe I have no further ships in the area. I sent... I think every single ship from here all the way to Spain to assist in the attack over there. Oh, the Olympia can help. That's a good cruiser to have here. It's a Scranton. Very reliable guns, very reliable ships. So that hopefully will make these things, re or they make the Chinese reconsider their attack on these things, these destroyers. Whether they will or won't, I don't know, but they might have their hands full in other domains, although attacking with 25,000 men against 5 million might be a little bit misguided for the British. Then again, that's never stopped the British. So, that is how things are. Join me for the next one as we figure out how or whether to invade Western Spain and what other battles are coming up. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more videos.